normally read sitting in bad articles like that. All right, episode 56. It's kind of how I catch up on that stuff. And I'm back. Last Let's week was it. the first week that I was gone. Let's do it. And That's right. And everything I fell know. apart. Oh, 100%. And the only person in the world who lost sleep over it was me. Okay. <laughs> no, no, we missed you. We had a good conversation about... Uh, a weird conversation, actually, about free will that mm. ended up me getting the book by Sam Harris from Chad. So we'll probably revisit that topic at some point. But this yeah, week, so- we are talking about the New York Times article. Yo, so first of all, yeah, it's the Times article on how Trump dodged taxes. So first of all... As well uh, as Columbus Day, but continue. What? That's not what this article is about. He's saying the second thing. No, it's oh, the first yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the, the the first thing that I wanted to ask you guys is just what did you think when you saw it? Um, sadly, the first thing I think is it's literal not surprise at all. I feel yeah, like I, agree with that. I feel like there has been a steady decline. Like I'm not one of these people that just all of a sudden just like expected all kinds of gar or even out of anybody just garbage to happen all the time. Like, but like slowly but surely, I get less and less surprised every time. And I saw this and I wasn't surprised. Um, and just basically, like, I also wondered how long it'd be a news story. I feel like it's not a news story anymore. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. But um, I always just keep thinking about the first, the f- especially when Trump was running for president and in the beginning of his presidency, it was easy to, like, um, compare him compare the things he did to like, oh, what if Obama did that? Conservatives would lose their mind, right? Like, it goes the other way too, by the way. But it was easier, it was easy to do that and like, you still kind of like had an argument that like, oh, if Trump did this, he wouldn't be able to get away with it. But if a Republican president like Bush or Reagan did it, they could get away with it too. No, we are well past that. Like, no president could get away with this. I I don't understand. I do not understand how these things can drop and it's just not a big deal. I mean, I, I know most people say it's because like the news cycle is so fast and th- stuff gets swept away. But man, this is crazy. This is insane. This man leads our government, and 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 I don't even want to use stole, but did not pay as much taxes as he did as he should have at all, allegedly. Oh my gosh. I just. Yeah, I mean, while it was yeah, a think? lot of money that seems to have gone missing or devalued that just was able mm-hmm. to be pocketed, uh, I think it's easy for people who still support Trump to shed this. That's why I think it didn't stick around oh, for course. too long. I mean, uh, what was it? They were paying, if they if they were to do it right at the time, they were going to be paying 55% tax uh, on gifts, I believe. Right, Mm -hmm. which is I didn't realize that's a very high number in the 80s. I did not expect that. So somebody could come back and just argue, uh, well, he's, you know, the the taxes weren't fair at the time anyway. So why not game the system, especially if he's using loopholes that were already there? And I had that written down. I literally had it. I have a few questions here that I wanted to go through about the article with you guys. And one of them was some might say tax dodging makes him heroic in a way. Yeah. And I was going to ask you guys if you thought that was true. I do not. We can have a conversation about how... No, I'm um, not saying that makes him heroic. Oh, what? Oh, sure. Is that what you think? Well, no, not really heroic, but I feel like you were alluding like to the saying fact that's... that some people, some people would be like, oh, this is savvy. Okay, but this article makes it clear that everything he was doing was illegal, not loopholes. This isn't loopholes, man. Yeah, but this when is tax, literally when devaluing tax, real estate. When you're taxing so, it at 55%, I mean, that's a bit unfair to begin with. Okay, right, and that's fine. And we can have that conversation. If that's that's what I'm saying. Have, we re- I mean, I would say that the greatest generation, the best generation <laughs> we had, or not, I don't, I don't, that's not even my opinion, but the generation people call the best generation came out of a time where we had 80, 90% tax, but okay, no problem. We can have that conversation. My point is, I still had, you still had, every single regular person still had to pay their taxes no matter what. Full in price, end of story. You just don't get to rule of law. How many times have I heard Republicans and specifically Trump say this law and order? Well, guess what? Tax law is law, period. Full stop, dude. So if I have to pay full percentage of my taxes for the laws that are written, you do the same. Thank you. Yeah, but some people would argue, Cyril, how much 
How much gift taxes have you paid in your life? I don't care. What's the law? Wait, That's hold on. I, I get that, but how right. much have you paid in gift taxes in your life? Zero. Why? Because there's a threshold for gift tax. It's a very high number. So if I use systems like, and for me what sticks out is what Fred Trump did, uh, starting a company, right? Yeah. And putting his kids as the executors or owners of or have shares in this company, which he was upping the costs of things that he was buying anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's how he kind of avoided paying taxes by giving it to his children. Right. Is, is that illegal? Yes. This article is making it makes it clear that everything that that not everything, what what but, he makes it clear is that mm -hmm. upping this isn't a loophole rent. Hold on. Upping the rest, upping the rent on customers especially in a rent controlled state like New York mm. by using this company to justify cost expenses is illegal. Is it illegal to put your child in charge of a company and do business through that company on behalf of your probably child? Probably not. I don't know, but probably the not. line between legal be. tax avoidance and illegal tax evasion is often murky and it is constantly being stretched by inventive tax lawyers. That's, True. Uh, I think the article. difficulty is that what you True, have but to they, prove... Just think about how that's worded. Inventive tax lawyers that are stretching... Come on, yo. Look. Y yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> when you're talking about 55%, you're talking about a lot of money. Wait, wait, Obviously, wait, they're going to go right. and do as far as they can to save themselves some money. Especially See, that's if they why, can right. dance along that line of legal and illegal. But, I mean, and, obviously, they're they're alluding to some other things that were very much illegal in this article as well. Right. And let's not, you guys know how, let's not kid ourselves. You guys know how I frame a lot of my arguments and how I think um, that alone makes me mad. Like the regular person who, you know, the regular person doesn't have thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend on an army of lawyers to like get all these advantages. He is a have. His family are full of haves and they get to continue to cheat the system. Meanwhile, have nots get fucked. This is what makes me upset. Well, this yeah. is what we need to address. Well, how do you address it? That's my question. How do you address it? By taxing it at 55%. That's not going to address it. That's where I disagree. Well, okay, fine. I what do you mean then? Address it, what? Addressing it to me means making the IRS much stronger in its power to actually do its job. That's the problem here, in my opinion, right? For example, we, I think we talked about this a while ago, yeah, so with the banking industry, exactly. when we had that 2008 financial collapse... Yeah. You've got the SEC doing audits where they have like one or two people doing an audit on AIG who has literally 500 people right. working on those same books. There's no fucking way on the planet that two people are going to be able to identify right. the ins and outs and intricacies of a ginormous corporation like AIG. And I use that same example when it comes to rich people like this. Like, there's not enough time in the day and not enough resources Listen, for the IRS to do its job effectively. Now you're being hospitable. You're you're being inhospitable to business, and now you're just going to drive it out of the country, Caleb. That might be the case, but we have to at least evaluate whether or not our tax code works properly, and you can't do that without properly enforcing it. Because once we properly enforce it, then we can have the conversation and say, okay, how much money is actually leaving the country? Because I bet you it's less right. than it really than right. than people make it out to be. Right. Hey, but to me specifically, the Panama uh, Papers came out not too long ago. What was that a year, year and a half ago? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of offshore money. Yeah. A lot of offshore money. Yeah. All right, Chad. Hey, this is my point here, best, though, but... is that in order to address right. what Zero wants addressed, you have to have a strong um, enforcement system in place. That is something that we do not have in the IRS. Mm. It makes sense for the IRS to be able to audit my taxes for one person because I'm the only right. fucking person that does them. So it makes sense that one person would be able to do it. When you're taking on a, a Trump family, when you're taking on, I'm going to throw in the AIGs or the city groups or the JP Morgans or banks or giant owners corporations, you have to have an army of people to be able to properly address and assess what is happening <clears throat> in that tax sphere. And that's something that I feel like we... Not, not we specifically, but the IRS and the American government fail at doing properly. And that's why you can have tr you know, Trump doing things like this, because no one's going to scrutinize it until he becomes the friggin' president. You know, If you yeah. think this is bad, let's go look at the Cokes. How much... That's what's very interesting to me, because... Paid, I think. 
this this article very much paints a picture where Trump had his hand directly in these affairs. I mean, he mm -hmm. sent he sent Fred Trump while he was in a uh, in the later years of his life, um, sort of an update on his will, and he sent it along with the message of this needs to be signed urgently. Yeah, and it was going to give uh, a a lot more control over Fred Trump's estate, and b it was going to pretty much bet against existing properties that Fred Trump owned on debt that Donald Trump had. So when you have these this many skeletons in the closet, I'm fascinated that this man went on to try and be president. Because how is this he not going to come to light eventually? Did not expect to win. Well, I'll tell you why. It's crazy. Right. Go back and, and watch. And, yeah, go ahead. This is another thing that I get from this specific article is how many times – did Trump fail as a businessman specifically? Six. I think it was six, six times. Six and he's yeah. right. When you fail that many times and you can just pick yourself right back up and not have to change your standard of living ever. That's privilege. You, you don't understand and you don't know what the repercussions of your actions ever really are, which is why you can get to the presidency and say, right. Yeah. Fucking act like a baby you can you can you can have locker room talk you can act like a moron you can just be completely brush off any accusations whatsoever regardless of if they hold water or not because you don't you've never actually suffered the repercussions of your actions that is someone who i do not want to be the president someone who's never had to suffer the repercussions of their actions right you know, and the one thing that I see that here literally sounds I like you're describing this. someone who doesn't understand what responsibility is, and I don't want that person as a leader, right? At all. And, and specifically, what I read <laughs> in this paper, yeah. what I got was Fred Trump babied Donald because he he wanted Donald to be like him. I was going to say so exactly he did that. Everything word. he could, he babied him to make sure that Donald was successful in every single endeavor. <clears throat> Again, that's the picture that's being painted by this New York Times article. Sure. But but it's a pretty compelling picture because when you look <laughs> at it, it I mean, let's go through all the failed businesses. Forget about the the casinos that failed and forget about the development deals that failed. How about how about Trump vodka? Trump oh, steaks. Trump airlines, Trump steaks, Trump University. Woo! Trump University. Man, man, Trump man, stakes pretty, at man. the nearest sharper image. <laughs> sharper. Image. <laughs> you want to like you are. Oh, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. a oh, yeah, yeah. crazy. Yep. You doing all your shopping, and you got to run to the sharper image to finish your list because you need some Trump stakes. I'm surprised you couldn't buy some Trump vodka and Sky Mall too when you're flying oh, wherever you're going. Hey, these tariffs though, <laughs> they're gonna save. They're gonna save our country. Oh, hey, oh, tr oh, oh, Trump's businesses? Oh, no, they're exempt. No, they're exempt. They're made in China. Yep, yep. Are they exempt? I don't know if they're exempt. Fake news. No, uh, I this think what's definitely... interesting, as we, as we continue this conversation real briefly, I was just watching... Was I just watching CNN, I believe? Wolf, Blitz, Wolf Blitzer, The Situation Room? Mm, um, yeah. They were talking about how, according to... I forget what group it was, but but I think it was Forbes... But according to Forbes, he's lost a billion dollars worth of personal wealth since he's become the president. People aren't going to his hotels. People aren't golfing at his golf clubs. People aren't. They're not using those services like they did when he wasn't president. Yeah, it's very I find interesting, interesting because <laughs> that guy goes into the presidency with one mindset, and that's growing his brand so he can make more money. And it's doing quite the opposite. Do you really think that? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think that now that brand, that Trump brand, is in the house and home of every hardcore Republican, right Republican. And when I say hardcore, I mean that that 20% of the 30% that vote Republican are now hardcore Donald Trump fans for sure. But all the fair weather people that just like to play golf and want to go to, to a Trump golf course just so that they can say that they've played golf there once... They don't want to do that anymore. I don't. Right. I, what's my incentive now to go to a, Do a Donald Trump golf course? I'll probably get protested by somebody when I go there. So fuck that. I'd rather go somewhere else. Well, it's interesting because it seems like his financial troubles were largely saved when he was successful in marketing the Trump name as synonymous with just insanely wealthy. Mm -hmm. So now he's taking that brand. And I, I don't know if he got 
into the presidency just to build his brand. I think he genuinely wanted to be president and he genuinely thought he could help this country. And he's now realizing he can't do either one of those things, uh, in my opinion, obviously. But it's interesting because now he's in as the presidency and that brand that he relied so heavily on to sustain that wealth is now just absolutely <laughs> taking a hit because we're watching this man be president. And this it's is why he didn't want to win. I didn't, yeah, I because, he, because he has so many skeletons in his closet. He says, if I win the presidency, it's going to be, I guarantee you they knew from day one, it'd be a constant battle of just fighting back to all the negative press because Trump is an asshole. And he's been that his whole, like he's been an asshole businessman. Ask a lot of people he's been in contact with over the years. Like so many skeletons in the closet. Stop playing. Come on. And then I, I think I told you on the pod once, there's an interview that um, some NBC reporter did with, Eric Trump in like 2015 or 16 on a golf course in North Carolina. I don't know. It was before there was even before Trump was running for president. This was like early decade. And he asked the Trumps, this is right after the, the great recession and the Trumps were buying up a lot of golf properties. And he asked Eric Trump, he's like, how are you guys? Where is the financing come from? Like great recession just hit. Nobody's lending any money. Like where are you guys getting your money? And he literally told the reporter, he goes that we get a lot of financing from Russia. So like, yo, there's not fire there, but a lot of weird shit. I wish it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I disagree with the sentiment that he didn't that he didn't really want to win. I do think he wanted to win, and I think he gets that from the social circles that he was, you know, partying in and hanging out with, or whatever the case may be. You know, I finally got around to watching that documentary that Dad asked us to watch. Uh, get me mm -hmm. Roger Stone. Did you guys see Netflix, that? Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I watched that when it first came out. So that's, that's when you watch that, right away. yeah, when yeah. you watch that though with Roger Stone, like this guy's been asking Trump to run for the presidency since the early 1980s. So, and the question is, is why? Why? Why do people, since then, so long ago, ask him to run? Mm -hmm. What for? Okay, like, that's that a good be... question to ask, and that's fair. But now, if we're gonna ask that question about Roger Stone, you said you watched the documentary. We have to start asking questions about Roger Stone's character. There's a lot of rumors uh, whoa, that are dropping. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I'm, we're not talking about his character. What I'm saying Why not? Is, He's the one whoa. that wanted Trump to run. Okay, okay, that's fair. I get that. But yeah. what I'm saying specifically is why do you think people... And I'm just using Roger Stone as the example... Person. Yeah. But why do you think they wanted him to run? Well, he's a good salesperson. And I also he's a con think man. He's a great con man. Well, what is I, politics I, except I, a sham? If you're a con man, welcome to the arena. Ooh. That's rough, especially when you want to get into that re arena, Cyril. Well, that's why we got to do better. <laughs> I, my point specifically, yeah. though, is is that to me, it feels like Donald Trump is somebody who's easier to to also toe a party line specifically. Like, as long as you make me happy by getting the White House and just telling me what I need to do, eh, whatever, I'll go do it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. No, and I think yeah. that also has a lot to do with it, considering how much money is being spent and what the ultimate goals uh, for a lot of these people are. You know, yeah. I, I mean, we're also talking about the same guy specifically who was like, oh, man, you know, all of a sudden he became religious. The man found God while he was campaigning. You know, why did he find God? Well, he's looking for the for the uh, mm -hmm. what's the word I'm thinking of? The evangelist vote. I think is what they call it, right? The Christian, the white Christian. Right, That's a huge, yeah, the evangelical, thank you. Evangelical vote is what he's looking for, you know? And I mean, this is what I think about all the time, too. Um, what is politics except for, or what is a politician except for someone who wants power? Like, and so I feel like that's most of the reason why we get shitty politicians because most of the people who want power, um, don't tend to want it for the best reasons mm -hmm. typically. So if you're more ruthless and aggressive, that's kind of who gets to the top of that system. And if you're more ruthless and aggressive, like it doesn't, doesn't sound like there's a lot of room for empathy, but you know, that's, that's fascinating. Cause I was watching. <laughs> yeah. So you guys know I'm a fan of meat eater. It's a, it's a television show from Steven Rinella. It's a hunting show. Okay. And in, in his newest season that just came out last week, one of the things that he does is he goes on a grouse hunt in Wyoming and he gets a chance to talk to the governor of Wyoming about specifically like wildlife practices and what they did in their state to, 
to recover the population of that bird, right? Yeah. And specifically, you know, Stephen asks, all right, so now that you've, you know, now that you've replenished the population of this bird, like, what's next on your agenda? And he goes, well, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm not going to be governor anymore. Like, I achieved my goal. I did what I need to do. And I'm stepping down because that's what the founding fathers wanted for our country. And instantly, Stephen is like, that's because you said that is more of a reason for you to not step down. Like, because you understand what the goal here is, what the purpose of these things are. <sighs> Okay. And you saying that yeah. just made me think of that. That's fair. Um, you know what? Never mind. Chad, let's go ahead with your article. I was about to go on another spiel, but we're not doing that. <laughs> Zero had uh, something to grab yeah. with there, clearly. I did, I but know. no, we're not doing it. I know. No, we're not doing it. No, not really. Not really. Not really a gripe. Um, I'll just I'll just put it out there, but don't respond. Seriously, don't respond. We'll let you go after. But I, what was on my mind? Because I can't really make that noise and not share. Is when when someone says, um, like, you get what we're doing. The founding fathers, this is how they wanted it. Like, what are we citing? And also, what does you get what we want to do around here? What does that mean? Like, we I can't have good leaders no. that serve or, go ahead. You can't say that and say not respond. I'm going to let Chad take that one first. Oh, go ahead, Chad. Go He's ahead, Caleb. You sound more fired up. He doesn't give a shit. Go ahead. I think just in that notion, what we're talking about there specifically is just the idea that the founding fathers, the idea again, and I get like a lot of people are like, oh, it's the founding fathers, they still no, okay. horses or whatever. The idea here is that it was it was an every man that was your representative, not right. career politicians. And I think specifically oh, I that. that's that's what he was citing specifically. Yeah. Like you get right. what we're doing here that the whole idea of government is for it to be represented by the every man or every sure. man, not career politicians who are lawyers who weasel their way through government time after time again and make a career out of it. I, I think, think that's specifically what he was referring to. Yeah, and I think the 2016 election is a good example of that. Um, because if you're the other party in a two-party system and you pick a really bad product to sell, then... Um, especially when there's so much anti-establishment sentiment. The only thing that bugs me is that e even by those standards of what you just said, tr the layman would probably say Trump's a better candidate in 2016, especially the way he ran and what he was saying. But Trump is a rich man himself as well. And we just talked about in this, in this cast a little while ago, how like, I don't know, like what adversity has he faced, man? And overcame and like learned and developed I, character. I don't see it because he acts I hear like a you. bitch. Go ahead. I hear you, but I think that point specifically in the 2016 election is that is that you saw people that weren't necessarily, mm -hmm. you know, your typical career politician, right? You had right. a Bernie Sanders, you had a Donald right. Trump. I might even throw John Kasich in there a little bit. I might throw in. You know what? You, uh, you're naming. You're not naming um, career. You're not naming all non-career politicians because no. Bernie is one. You're naming people right. who don't have big interest connections so much. Right, right, right. right. And I establishment to me means like you don't have a lot of money and connections and favors to give to big interests. Like fucking represent your constituents. You know. And I think specifically, when it came to this last election, that's really what we saw was the rising of people like saying, "Okay, I don't want Jeb Bush." Oh, I, I, for that. I mean, to me, to me, <laughs> quite frankly, and you may disagree, but for me, peripherally, because I'm not a Democrat and I don't follow them as closely, but it seemed like Hillary Clinton was just forced down the Democrats' throats. There wasn't, yeah, you know what I mean. There wasn't a genuine grassroots feeling of yes, this is our candidate. That wasn't there right. with Hillary Clinton as much as it was with Bernie, as much as it right. was with Obama, even. You Dude, know, what did I tell you about my vote anymore? You so. know where I lean. And what did I tell you about my vote? You got it. You still got to earn it, man. I'm Gary I Johnson, voted. Gary Johnson, I voted, Gary Johnson. I voted wildly against my. I voted for my social interests, but wildly against my economic interest. Not interests, but like the way I perceive things and the way I want them to go, because I was so disgusted with the two candidates <laughs> that I had to choose from. And I also, I've had this conversation with JC. I think I told you too. I also, I said this then too. You can ask John. Gun to my head. Who would I pick between those two? He asked me that, and I said Donald Trump. And I still stand by that. Ooh. And the reason why I said Donald Trump is because dad, all, what dad said before he got elected still rings in my head every single day. I voted him in not because I thought he would necessarily work out. I was hoping he would. But if he didn't, I knew he'd blow the whole thing up. And I th did, were we talking last night about this, I think? And I mentioned it. There is 
like I, maybe I wasn't talking to you. Maybe I was talking to someone else. But there is like real unprecedented like left enthusiasm right now. It is crazy. And it's only gone up since I knew whoever was going to win the Kavanaugh fight. This is how politics works. Whoever loses that game gets fired up to vote, vote them out. And you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, so now that Kavanaugh won, like, dude, Susan Collins opponent who we don't even know exists. We don't even know who it is, has $3 million in the bank already. That's I've never seen anything like that. That is unfucking believable. Now, as with anything, there are trends and there are reasons for trends. So when it comes to the left and if it comes to a progressive uprising, it, it remains to be seen if even this much energy will get people to the polls because typically people who are on the left, um, not always in the, in this day and age, but typically they can be younger or people of color or more disadvantaged people um, who just for, for whatever reason, we can have that discussion if you want. I don't really want to, but for whatever reason, don't vote as much. Right. So we'll see what happens. There's definitely energy on that side, but Trump himself is his own kind of energy too. It's crazy. Like even his supporters are still fired up to vote. It's nuts, man. Like the whole thing I've never, I'm, it is such a good time to be political junkie. I swear to God, dude. <laughs> oh, it's so fascinating. All right, Chad. Columbus. Oh, ahead, yeah. Yeah. It was a far ways from, and don't respond, but that's, <laughs> that's all right. You can't oh, say that you know how this in works. this pod. I'm sure. Won't work. I, all right. I still don't fully understand what happened. I could have skipped right. it over if you didn't make it clear you wanted to hear it, but once you made that clear, you knew you opened that up. But go ahead. <laughs> well, I saw understand. You can't sit there and say don't answer. All right, go right, ahead. Sorry. Right. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, uh, today being Columbus Day, there's been a lot of talk, especially in recent years, at least in more of a serious sense, of renaming Columbus Day. What Cyril uh, prompted me or prompted us, I suppose, with this article after I dropped it in the Hangouts, um, New York Times piece. Should Columbus Day be replaced with Indigenous Peoples Day? Is essentially the question we're asking here. So, does anyone have strong opinions immediately coming out of the gate? No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Go on. I like how that goes. Yeah, right. Um, I definitely get and understand this this sentiment from you know indigenous peoples and certainly the way that history you know especially when we were growing up and went through school how that was kind of portrayed. Um, I definitely get that. I would say that instead of just outright getting rid of Columbus Day it's, itself and just making it Indigenous People Day, like why not? Because the argument that I've heard so far, and I listened to an N NPR bit here specifically in Rochester. Um, because we actually had two opposing views here locally uh, and two different events that actually occurred on Columbus Day. So first you had uh, the Indigenous Peoples Day where I have to find the article specifically, but th they had, you know, a Native American representative come and actually talk about what Columbus Day meant to him and, and his people, his tribe and, and what happened here locally uh, in Rochester. And then at the same time, you have an event held by um, the Italian American club here in Rochester, which is a very big club locally. Uh, and they do a thing every year that celebrates uh, Christopher Columbus and his Italian heritage. So you kind of got both worlds here. And when I was listening to that, I thought to myself, you know, and a lot of the argument that I continue to hear is, is that specifically history is inaccurately represented when it comes to Christopher Columbus. And um, it's not, even close to doing or talking about anything indigenously, why don't we just call it like, I don't know, the America's day where we talk about the people that were here, how it was founded and what actually occurred historically and, and make sure if the whole point is for all of us to understand it, why don't we talk about all of it instead of ignoring one piece or the other? Uh, that's kind of how I landed on that after reading the article you guys sent and listening to the NPR piece uh, here locally about what was going on. Sure. I mean, time and time again, we've we've come to the conclusion that taking a bit of good ideas from both camps and merging them together always tends to be the best solution. Dude, um, who are ahead. these people that are so offended by the dumbest things? I like. I just don't know mm. these people in my life. I just <laughs> don't. I'm not interested in debating something I have no idea about. Do I know that Columbus hated the natives? I don't. I don't know. I don't want to debate about things that are like from 1400 and whatever. 
92 sail the ocean blue, whatever it is. I don't know. I just don't care. I just do what you want. Like, as long as you're not bothering me, like, I don't care. Well, I, I think what people have a specific gripe with is that when you make yeah. something like that a holiday, um, you know, what are, what are the other important holidays that we have here in America, right? Our independence, independence day, mm. um, Thanksgiving even has been, you know, a little targeted by the same uh, kind of premise as Columbus Day. I, I think the point is, is that if we as a society are what? putting our stamp on. What do you mean what? Who? Thanksgiving is literally a meal that was shared together. There wasn't anybody dying or anything. I, I Who understand. Was upset about that? There are. Yeah, absolutely. There's people. I, have, I, need, I need proof. It's a very small bad. minority. Yeah. But I think my point here is, is that yeah, when yeah, you yeah, have a perfect. holiday based on something like that, it's to a lot of people, it's the government's sign of approval saying that this is okay. And I think that's how people take it. Not necessarily um, <clears throat> that there's anything like right yeah. or wrong about it. It's just that you're you as a government, which means us as a society, you know, because our government does reflect our society because of we, you know, we have a democratic government. I get that. I think that's I still, where that yeah. sentiment comes from. Specifically, I still wish everybody wouldn't just like everybody would have healthy amount of skepticism for all institutions, government, sure, big business, small business, person. Like, like I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why. Like that has to like push. I mean, I get that it does, but it just sucks that it. Also, intention matters, right? Like, if you go out on the street on Columbus Day and a whole bunch of people are at a Columbus Day parade. Do you think that they're celebrating natives dying by the thousands? <laughs> or do you think they're celebrating the fact that, like, oh, my gosh, this was a big event in history? Or do you think they're just trying to have a good time with their family? Like, I don't know. Like, well, Columbus doesn't matter? Go ahead. Columbus Day, for me, um, always was more about the event that happened, not necessarily Christopher Columbus himself. Because this was us rediscovering our own species from a whole continent that was completely divided right. from... What right. we saw at that time as sure the rest is. of the world. Yeah, I mean, it was it was more, it, and it was inevitable. I mean, it was inevitably right. going to happen. And the, the stark reality is that when it did happen, 90, 90%, 85 to 90% were going to die from diseases that they just hadn't been exposed to. We had developed some particularly bad diseases in Europe and otherwise because League. we had established... Uh, civilizations more or less that crammed us into close quarters into tight cities whereas um, Native Americans mm. were still quite new to the American continent so they hadn't yet established that type of those types of cities I suppose I don't know if they so, were new yeah. per se but they still were egalitarian societies Egalit that's a bit of a romanticization I think yeah, but they were all of them they didn't have North cities. and South America they didn't have cities. Well, I guess that's Are you not thinking right. of just specifically upstate New York, I, I, the I'm, Seneca tribe? I guess I'm thinking specifically of you know, <laughs> America, the way it, the way where the lines are drawn for America today. Can't really say that about like the Incas or the Aztecs. I mean, they did have cities. They did. They had cities. They had bigger. Cities. I, I guess that's what I'm saying, and I'm thinking more of like the Prairie tribes, um, or the Iroquois who lived in. You know, they didn't have buildings per se. They were still wandering following herds of you know deer elk whatever whatever food well, source they were in following. relation to how long people had been settled in other parts of the world they were still fairly new yeah no no you're right and it takes time for you to settle in and develop civilization and and, and i guess you know you could argue about civilizations or at least societies can emerge different structurally but my point is is that it was going to happen anyways it was a huge event in human history right. and yeah it sucks for the people that were first persons i suppose on that continent they mm -hmm. kind of got annihilated um so you know i think maybe rename columbus day then if you don't like christopher columbus but i still think that that's a huge event in human history that we should recognize i mean that has some pretty large significance right yeah yeah and I then agree. you could also have an indigenous pe indigenous people's day if you want i don't give a well, shit i, I think i also want to poll everybody that's at a columbus day parade in a random city and be like how much did you think about columbus and how much are you celebrating like the fact that he crossed the ocean today you're gonna go to a whole bunch of yeah i just want to take my kids to the parade man <laughs> thanks <laughs> right. my kids have a day off from yeah, that's school fine. 
<laughs> Go ahead, Caleb. Right. Daycare is closed right now, so I'm kind of forced to be here. <laughs> nah, I, I just think a fair point. renaming it or renaming the idea to like America's Day would be the idea of being able to celebrate the fact that, yes, there was indigenous people here. And yes, a white Italian dude did cross the ocean. And unfortunately, some shitty, terrible things happened. But that's not an excuse to kind of, you know take yeah. one side or another you know? i also i take great odds with looking at the context of human history with the moral uh goggles that we have today like uh, that, how can you that too, I, it, it absolutely I infuriates that, yeah. me like yeah Give that doesn't make things doesn't make things objectively better but like the, people were conquering and slaughtering all the time back then that that's just humanity genghis khan yeah. was not real he's not that didn't really happen <laughs> I just I hate that man. Like we we yeah. have rose colored glasses, and then we get so mad at the people that existed before us. But like we're humans, we've been shitty for a long time, and we're just now really right. coming to our senses about what is right and what is wrong. And even then, we're still a fucking far ways off from that. Oh, absolutely. But as if that disqualifies big events in the in the past or people in the past. Yeah, let's acknowledge right. the shitty things that we did uh, that they right. did, I suppose. Right. But. It doesn't completely make everything disingenuous. I hate that. I don't get that sentiment. I mean, so ultimately, my question would be, though, is what do you think of America's Day? Well, we already have that. No, we don't. July 4th. Bro, that's, that's not America's that's, Day? That's the, on, the independence of the United States I think, of America. I'm talking yeah, about America's, saying, like North America, yeah, South America. Oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah. when we discovered the oh, Americas. Okay. Yeah, I'm about that. Unquote. That's fine. Yeah. It's gonna be a better name. There you go. I'm sure there's a better name, but next day for the concept. What species day? It was more of a significant event in terms of our species, rather than no, for sure. Apparently, the continents themselves. That's that's my point, but I don't um, know. You could call. I think some. I think like some us. activists would also <laughs> lob in genocide day because they would. <laughs> yeah, but said that's so you know disingenuous. It no, is. I mean, if we're going to have a genocide day, it might as well be every day of the year because we kill each other all the time. <laughs> We've done a yeah. lot of shit. Uh, humans in so, general. So that brings us... A lot of genocide that tendencies. Us, that brings Pretty us common theme, dude. Pretty common theme. One more thing I want to talk about. Um, and actually, I'm glad you guys brought up... I'm glad I brought up genocide because it, it links right in. So What? No, not really. But um, Chad posted the... Um, whole like hey scientists are like you guys are really dumb and you have 10 years ish Ooh, whatever to do that one um i no, this is what i want to do okay i want to play a little bit of, a little bit of a game here okay it's called what's our deal sure. so the first thing i want to ask you both is do we agree that climate change is happening mostly in the way that is you know generally accepted out there all three of us because i do right like do you believe in climate change yeah generally uh, climate change in the sense okay. that the climate does change but right now it's being exacerbated by human activity yes okay so now i think that's what sir was trying to say what is our deal right okay i read this article and and i've been on the record and i was legit i was being legitimate i was joking a little bit a lot but i was being legitimate like science <laughs> our way out yo this article makes me unhappy and really kind of shatters, pops my bubble there. Um, so, yeah, basically just like, what's our deal? Like, if we're not doing enough, why aren't we doing enough? Um, like, what are the causes of this? And they don't even have to be like bash or this side is wrong and this side is the problem. It doesn't even have to be a problem. It's just like, what's our deal, dude? Like, why are we not... I'll tell you is it, is, tell it, you. is it just maybe it's already run away enough or maybe we never even had a chance maybe we were kidding ourselves thinking we could even control this i don't know what's our you know i don't know our deal is that we have this terrible inherent flaw as human beings <clears throat> that not a single one of us can look forward past our own lifetime so we're screwed <laughs> so we're screwed we are fucked 100%. yeah so i was gonna until, say yeah until ai takes over and just makes those decisions for us Mm. we're we're going to die most likely. No, I thought about this myself, Kill, but this is kind of why I wanted to bring it up. Not not okay. not necessarily that grim, but Welcome to Optimism Hour. In the <laughs> sense that like I I thought about this um when Chad posted this too and I read it. I was like from the moment from the moment that we developed as a species and we had the cognitive ability that we had, 
there was always, I feel like, going to be a tipping point. The way that fossil fuels works and the way that the planet works and our, our ecosystem and the way that we were going to achieve the greatest things that we have so quickly in this day and age, or even just over the years, was always going to be with things that emit greenhouse gases. So because I agree with Caleb, we cannot fucking control ourselves, especially when we have 7 billion people. Like, there's no way you can get a handle on that. And so I feel like there was always going to be the inevitable <clears throat> destruction by climate. This is really what I feel, especially after this article. There was always the inevitable destruction by climate. The only race against the clock was, can we develop AI? Can we develop tech enough to fight back? And I don't know. I don't know. This article, what I'm trying to say is this article made me feel things. <laughs> You're not alone in this. This girl has not felt in a long time. Oh, no, wrong. Go ahead. Uh, again, to me, it's 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 an inherent flaw in human beings. You know, if you're right. lucky, you might get a leader that can look 50 years into the future, like properly, like to the next generation. <clears throat> but typically speaking, we 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 just Dude, are incapable of doing that. We're just incapable of doing that, which is right. why backs you up until it's literally on our effing doorstep and, and it, we might not be able to change it you're right right exactly at that point use the proverbial right. science problems are on such this. a scale right this is why i got afraid because these um, problems are on such a scale that it's not just you know oh hey clean up the environment for a few years and the toxins will go away or, or whatever pick whatever you know right. this is on a huge I literal believe, climate of a planet scale yeah, yeah. I, I do believe that we will science our way out of it but and i know i Ken agree but there's a tip i say that but what i genuinely also believe is that like there's a good chance we're going to lose half the population of the planet at okay. least by the time we figure it out now, i'm not saying that we're going to figure out and no consequences will be suffered i think that severe right. consequences will happen but because of the consequence we will figure it out just it'll be really really fucking bad but but think about how savage human beings are too and if you throw a catastrophe in there in of of even hundreds of millions of people let alone half the population everybody runs around like chickens with their heads chopped off and unless you get a really good leader or some situation where things can stabilize you're looking at a society that might just eat each other out and just just destroy destroy itself because but I think it, it's how true. much instability can be introduced before it's just a downward spiral of it's a runaway train. But I think the one thing that you'll see is that when these things do happen, mm -hmm. there's a there's a small group or sect of people or you know what I mean this, I this break off group that does figure it out and they are able to right. handle it while everyone else is killing each other over trying to get whatever right. It's whatever highly unlike your food or whatever. Right. It's highly unlikely that this event or anything that followed it apocalyptically, like I just said, would wipe out the rate, the human race. What is likely is the remnants of that and the remnants of those people. Could they ever build themselves up as much? And if they can't, then they're eventually just going to get wiped out. And that's the same thing. It's just you're kicking the can. But yeah, well, I, again, there's right. an inherent problem with human beings that we cannot we do not look past right. tomorrow, you know? There's a I was point. listening to a Neil deGrasse Tyson um, bit, sound bit, where he was literally talking about the same thing when it comes to um, watching the cosmos for, you know, comets and asteroids coming our way. Yeah. Like, if there's something that's going to wipe us out, it's that, and we don't even, we barely look at the sky at all to see if there's anything coming our way. We look a lot. I, there's a lot we have cataloged in our solar system. You Sure, cataloged, yes, but like, Uh, if it comes from, and I can't use directionals the way that I want to describe it. If you, if, if the earth really was flat, Ooh, <laughs> to the East and to the West, we look right. If you look at the equator looking outwards from that, we do, we're not good at looking North and South. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of holes, you know, rear view mirror type, Thing, objects in the mirror closer than they appear type situations that I feel like we're definitely exposed to and we don't give a fuck. Right. You know, and I go back to that, that comet that hit in Russia in the middle, what is it, wiped out 15,000 acres of forest in, in, a, in a blink of an eye? Mm -hmm. yeah, if that a hit a city, we would have reacted so differently. Yeah, but I think the major point there, though, is there's no, 
there's no planet sterilizing type of asteroids out there that we don't know about. Those are big. Those are big mofos. Yeah, but what about like <clears throat> region vaporizing asteroids? Sure, those are the ones that are. They tend to slip under the radar a bit more, but like imagine we're talking about climate change. Hitting... No, no, I know, but I... sterilizing the planet. I, I get you. I, I hear you. You know, and unfortunately, if that happens, it happens. Like we're just we're a shitty species. That's it. <laughs> I guess so. National there's no. At its finest. Yeah, right? there's no. You want to talk about Darwin Award? Going to end. Here we go. Right. We're gonna Darwin yeah. the fuck out of this one, boys. It is unfortunate because human beings as a whole, there are plenty of people who will sound the alarm, but as a whole, we don't take a step in any direction until there is a flame at our ass. And unfortunately, with this problem, by the time that flame gets to our ass, it might be too late. Because it can yes. be exponential. Yes. yes. That's the problem. So maybe it takes reports like this. And maybe, I, I mean, I don't know. Climate, climate, climate scientists have been sounding the alarm for a very long time. And we've just never really taken it seriously, obviously. Yeah. I, I, it's, so I don't know. It, I feel yeah. like it's also well, how it's we are you know, the reason why we are the way we are is because we have a limited lifespan, number one. And number two, the way we evolved was we got to worry about right now, not what's going on tomorrow. We got to worry yeah. about food yeah. now and water right. now and, and resources right. now. And that... That's what I'm saying. Like, we're almost designed to just fail. Like, we're, we're going to have a tipping point of do we have enough technology and AI well, and, to fix and, it? And, <laughs> yeah. It, this also may explain one of, the, one of the great mysteries of the universe is where is that other life out there? Uh, they might have done the same shit we're pulling off right now, yeah, uh, and not I made it right. Think, though I do think yeah. we've got to we've gotten to a point where if stuff really does start to get bad, we can focus an intense amount of resources on saving enough people. Yeah, we I can. We I don't can. think. Yeah, yeah I don't can. think humanity at at, at no, the no, worst that this can get. I don't think humanity gets. But that's a fun discussion to have, though, Chad. You oh, you heard what I said earlier. If that that's fine, and then respond to the you know respond to the point that like. Well, look, you save as as many people as you can, but maybe you can't even build back up, and you're just kicking the can. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, you're gonna get wiped out. You're just you're hanging on for dear life. There's there's no question that one event wouldn't wipe all the human beings out, but I mean, eventually it? it might just happen anyways. I mean, something what? can, something can, but I'm oh, saying okay, this okay. event, this one, gotcha, 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 will not wipe all human beings out in just a blink of an eye, flash kind of thing. No, no. No. no, it won't. And I think, uh, and by blink of my flash, I mean like one, two years, even. So right, it won't. No, but it can. It can completely destabilize us. So, I right, know, and that's man. a downward spiral. That's what I'm saying. Also, I said earlier, I was like, once you're destabilized, right? You know, unless you, how do you get a hold on that? It, there's a tipping point. You're not. You're not still producing technology and research. Once all the laws we've created and lines and borders and all that just breaks down. Oh, man. Zombie it's movie. It's concerning. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, you, uh, we don't yeah. have to be concerned about it. But if if things go really bad here, it's going to be uh, our children, essentially. You know what we will so be able to know? A by the silence lives, for them. We'll be able to confirm for sure. Not necessarily if climate change is a thing or not. We can already confirm that, I think, with the evidence. Um. But we'll be able to confirm how bad things are 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 how bad things really are going to be, even not maybe not in a whole sense, but by the end of our lifetime, like we're going to be we're going to know like oh man, we done we oh, done yeah. fucked. Yeah, there's going to be by the time we die, there's no question that in the public conscience of hopefully the whole world and leadership of the whole world, they're going to be like, wow, we fucked up and I, we really need to start working towards. Yeah. After reading that uh, free will book by Sam Harris, I kind of went on a little bit of a binge uh, oh. in terms of like just a public appearances, public debates. He's very well spoken, but yeah. he can't, he can be a little dry, but the man knows exactly what he's talking about. Most of the time I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and there was one Q and a he was at and somebody asked a question and it kind of stuck with me. He was asked, um, are you optimistic for the future of humanity? And essentially his answer was, I'm pessimistic for the next hundred years, but if we can survive that, I'm fairly optimistic for the next thousand. I agree. Years. Tipping Which point. Which I thought was, Tipping yeah. Tipping point. Yeah. Very interesting, though, that we happen to be in that generation where humanity is either going to survive or be Tipping largely point, yeah. reduced or even annihilated. So 
Think about how quick that happened. Great. Two computers were invented, what, in the mid-1900s? Oh, My know. God. This is insane. Yeah. Well, insane. It all started with energy, right? Fuel. This whole issue starts, you know, when we use know. oil, when we use gas, when we figured out a way that this shit, this dark ass shit that comes out of the ground that stays in my clothes. Wait a minute, I can use this to power industry. That's, <laughs> you know, and and we've had to battle all yeah. sorts of insane questions. You know, I was I was in my hunting stand and I'm reading um, the Jungle by Upton Sinclair. Just just the scope of disgusting nature that industry was back in the late <laughs> 1800s is insane. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Oh, you were butchering a cow and you lopped your arm off? Don't worry about it. It'll get grounded up and somebody will eat it. Meat's meat, dude. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. All right, well, appreciate you guys playing. What's our deal? Yeah, it was... <laughs> uh, week. Next week we play now. War on Drugs. What's our deal? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I just wanted um, to ask you guys. That. All right, I'm going to... What's our deal? And the end result is we're all...